Hey everyone, this is Dave on Sierra PG Dungeons and Dragons Night. Uh, I really haven't taken time to do any gameplay right now, but because I'm in the middle of uh, still job searching, I thought I'd tell you guys a little bit about uh, some of the events I attended as a security guard. Um, I worked for a different company. I live in Fresno, California, by the way. And one of my first jobs as a security guard was I did events in San Francisco. So I had to take a charter bus with fellow guards to various events in the Bay Area, particularly San Francisco. And um, my first event that I attended, my very first job ever as a security guard, in fact, was uh, the Pride Parade back in 2018. And... What I could tell you was, if you could survive a pride parade as a security guard, you could survive anything. So, um, what they had you do was you would go in and they would have you dressed for whatever event you're going to. They had, you know, the uniforms waiting for you. So what you had was, you had to show up in black pants, black shoes, and a white button-up shirt. And at the time, I didn't have the guard card yet. I was in the process of getting it. So, but I was still allowed to work because uh, there was a lot of jobs they could have a guard at without actually being guards or have the guard card. And uh, so what ended up happening was I go to this event and I'm nervous because my best friend was supposed to go with me because he also applied to, he also was working for them. He was the one that got me the job. And uh, he didn't show up for that one because they had him going to a different job on the same day. And I was kind of upset because I'm sitting there going, like, who's going to show me the reps? I don't know what I'm going to do here. I don't know what I'm doing. So uh, we, I go, and I'm panicking the entire time. I think I'm going to screw up. They want me to get in a certain line, you know, a certain line with certain groups and stuff. And i got to keep track of the people I'm with. And hardly anybody in my group spoke English. Um, so I was in a I was in a panic sort of, but I just kind of did what everybody else was doing or thought they were doing, and uh, I was doing okay. So we get to this event, and uh, and I'm we go into this. Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember. It was the Bill Graham Building, I think it was. I think that's what it was called. Well, I only went to this event one time, so I'm, I might be a little hazy on the names of the buildings. But, uh, so I go in, they put, they give me the rest of the uniform, which is a walkie-talkie, and a, uh, I think it was an orange vest. Well, maybe it was a black vest, I don't quite remember. But uh, anyway, so... And then they, they lead our groups out to the various areas where they want us to be. And we end up in the, I end up at this one area, and it was, uh, they were going to have me do the wand for metal detecting. As people were coming through the uh, little metal detector archways. And um, then they changed their mind and instead had me over at the bull, where it was like I'm telling people, and I still remember exactly what I said every single time which was, please put all metal objects in this bowl, wallet, keys, what, you know, wallet, keys, whatever. If they had a watch on, that was fine. If they had the belt with a metal belt buckle on, they, you know, they had to tell us they had that. And so, so we didn't have to tell them to take those off. We just had to know that they had them on them. And um, so it was wallets, keys, any loose change, stuff like that. Anyway, so... It's about 7 in the morning, and the first few people just start showing up. And I think it was like the 6th or 7th person, and it's this girl, well, well, at least I think it was a girl, dressed up like a sexy unicorn. And she goes, uh, she's talking with a really cutesy little voice and stuff, so that's why I'm kind of questioning whether or not she was an actual girl or not. And um, I, uh, you know, she... I'm using she in loose term here. Uh, she uh, puts her stuff on in the bowl, and you know I let her pass through. And when she when she uh, pass, you know she passes through, and she passes, of course, you know there was no problems. 
She comes back over and kisses me on the cheek. <laughs> I'm just sitting there like, okay, that just happened. So I knew I was going to be, you know, right after that, I knew I was going to be in, um, in um, situations that I was not going to be used to. So um, I'd say about 8 o'clock was, was when business really started to kick in and people started making lines and stuff. And the lines were going on forever. I mean, you could look down and you, it, we were out in an open area except for where our section which was basically like a um, it was about the width of a house I would say a small house and you had about four aisles and I was at the far far I would say I was in the first aisle to the right of the whole section and I'm at this table and we have people going through and stuff and we'd have people you know trying to sneak in knives and various things like that about halfway through and this is going to be a little x-rated here so be forewarned it's going to get a little x-rated here these two girls walk in and or walk up and i have to take a wand and i have to look in their bags or one of their back one of them had a backpack and i had to look into their backpack so she opens it up for me i take a wand which is basically a a drumstick and i you know i stick my drumstick in there and i'm fiddling around through there and it's nothing but dildos and vibrators. And <laughs> I mean, that was the entire the entire content of their backpack was nothing but dildos and vibrators. That was it. And um, she goes, the one girl goes, "Why'd you bring all of them?" And she, the other girl goes, "Well, I didn't. I know how you get if you meet someone you like. I didn't know which one you'd want." And they're saying this to everybody out in, the, out, in the, out in the area. And I'm just sitting there, and I'm just sitting there trying to keep a straight face. But, uh, so, yeah, and then she zips up her bag, and they go through, and I put the bag through the metal thing, you know, the little detector thing for bags. And I'm just sitting there going, <laughs> I, and I'm going, this is going to be my entire day today. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I got another 11 hours of this with a, uh, with an hour break in between. No, it wasn't even that. I think it was a half hour break in between. But uh, so I'm sitting there going, "Oh my God, is this is this what I'm going to be dealing with all day?" So around two o'clock comes around, and I finally get to go have a lunch. I go back over to the grand uh, the grand building, and uh, they uh, you know they had a free lunch for us over there. So I go over there. I have my lunch. I kick back for a little bit. It's the first time I got to sit down in about. Seven, eight, nine, ten. About six, seven hours. It's the first time I got to sit down the entire time. My legs are killing me. And uh, so we get through that. I get through my lunch. I come back, and they put me in a different. They put me in a different position. Uh, now I'm doing the the wand, uh, the metal detector wand that I got to wave over people's head. And that went for about a good hour and a half. So something different I was doing. And then they put me to a different table and I'm doing the same thing again with the bowl. So I'd say it's about four or five in the evening and I get this I get these two this this group comes in and vinyl and leather and the vinyl and leather is hardly covering anything on these people. And one of them and two of them are a pair of twins. Or assuming the pair of twins because they're wearing the exact same thing. They're wearing bob hair, bob haircut wigs with pink, pink wigs with bob hair. Yeah, you know, that whatever. And uh, wearing a, a vinyl vests or leather vests that stopped right about here, and wearing rainbow colored bikini bottoms, thong, and um, and uh, those uh, fluffy leg warmers. <laughs> Pink fluffy leg, leg warmers and uh, black fa black uh, platform shoes. How I remember that I don't know, because it was what happened. I think it was because what happened immediately after I said, uh, "Please put your wallet, your keys, anything of uh, anything in your pockets that are metal onto the bowl." And after I said this, I hadn't looked at them yet. And after I said this, I look over. And I realized 
Their outfits have absolutely no pockets on them whatsoever. So their response, and they look at each other like they know exactly what they're going to do, and they're exact, thinking the exact same thing. They look at me, smile, and do this, and there's nothing underneath but their boobs. <laughs> I just sat there and went like, thank you. <laughs> and I think I actually yelled that. I just went, thank you. <laughs> and let them go their merry way. And I'm just sitting there like, oh my God. These people have no shame whatsoever. And mind you, I lived in an area of Fre near an area of Fresno where, uh, you know, the quirky people were a common thing. So I was kind of used to this sort of thing. But still at the same time, it still kind of shocks you when it happens. And so around, uh, oh, I'd say it was around 6, six or 7 o'clock, you know, things are starting to wrap, wrap up, you know. Um, and uh, the last person that came through, the last person that came through was an elderly gentleman, I believe was in his late 80s, early 90s, possibly late 90s, wearing nothing but uh, rainbow colored sneakers. And, um, and uh, his um, junk was rainbow, he painted rainbow colored. And he's not in my lane, he's in the lane across from me, which means that table's, fa you know, the girl on that table is facing me, and he's in her line. And all I'm thinking to myself is, please do not find a reason to drop something on the ground. <laughs> And he drops his keys on the ground, obviously. He has to drop something on the ground. And he bends over, and I'm like, oh, and I'm looking straight up, because I do not want to look up his butt. <laughs> I'm just... And so I'm waiting for like a full minute and a half for this guy to get back up and walk away. And I'm just staring up. And the girl kind of realized what happened, and she says, it's safe now. And I look down. And she was one of the few people that actually spoke English. So it was like when she told me it's safe now, I'm like, thank you. That's <laughs> like, I went back to work. And so finally we're packing up. We're getting ready to go. We're just waiting for, um, you know, everything to get finalized and we can get the clearing to go home. We start walking back to, and it's like, a, like about... 100 yards from where we're at to the building we got to go to to uh, return the gear and wait for our buses and as we're heading over there a fight breaks out between two people and that two people turns into four people and it turns into six people and all of a sudden I got about ten people wrapped all around me fighting each other and I hear a guard you know, the, one of the head guards, the actual armed guards, telling me, stay put, don't move. I'm not moving. I'm just standing there like this as these people are fighting around me. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, holy crap, what happened? I don't know. I still don't know to this day what took place, but it was all of a sudden these, these two groups of people were just beating the hell out of each other around me. You know, it was a... Girls beating up girls, guys beating up guys, and whatever. It was like, you know, at least they were fair fighting it but, and at that degree. But I'm just sitting there like, holy crap. And a bunch of the other armed guards come in, and they start snatching them up and stuff. And once it's all, you know, they got it all dispersed, then I was out allowed to continue on, the, you know, to, you know, headquarters. And my heart's going like, like, what happened? What you know? Why did that have to happen around me? Anyways, we get back on the buses. You know, we, we return our gear. We get back on the buses. We head home, and it's about oh god, it was like one or two in the morning, and I was able to get a ride home. And uh, I think I think I literally slept the entire day the next day. I was so exhausted. And um, that was my actual first day as a security guard. Um, I know it's not very fancy storytelling or anything like that, but if you guys are interested in other events I went to, uh, let me know in the comments and I might tell you another uh, event or something I went to. Um, I just thought this was something a little extra to tell you guys, you know, because, you know, I don't tell that much about me on my channel, but. Um, 
As a security guard, I do have some interesting stories. Some not so interesting, but uh, the more interesting ones I guess I could share with you guys just to give you a hint about what I go through sometimes. You guys take care, and I'll see you guys in another video on CRPG Dungeons & Dragons Night. Bye-bye.